Hey, what's up? So I updated my camera settings and I messed with my lights a little bit. I think that's a lot better. Um, so I want to tell you a story from the NWA. So it was about 2009. I was working a show for NWA Oklahoma. I'm not exactly sure if that's what the promotion was called, but it was for the NWA and it was in Oklahoma. Hey, before I start the story, now's a really good time to shoot me a sub and a like. You know it helps me. I appreciate it. Back to the story. Um, on the, the card that night was um, all the, the guys that I came with from Houston. There was a few you know, rookies and a few new guys to the business, but I was also there with uh, Chaz Taylor. You might know that name from GWF fame. Him and his father, Tug Taylor, Tugboat Taylor, um, were a tag team there. They were a major storyline uh, people in GWF for years. And I actually was trained by Tugboat. And so I've known Chaz for about 20 years now. So we were there. And also on the show was Spoiler, the actual real spoiler guy. Um, also Brent Albright, also known in WWE as Gunner Scott. Okay, so there's various matches that night. It was uh, in like a little National Guard armory kind of place, you know. And so nothing major, no, no kind of weird stipulation matches, just a regular wrestling card. Nothing crazy. There was kids there, parents, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And in Oklahoma... The pro wrestling industry is regulated by the Boxing Commission. And so you have to have blood work and uh, license. It's like 20 bucks a year. So it's, it's not like a big deal. Uh, but you have like all the stuff to, to, if you don't have that, you don't work. So there's like an official guy back there in like a suit with like a badge hanging around his neck. Like a, you know, like he is an official represent, representative of the Boxing Commission. And he's there basically checking people's papers. So he's sitting over there just to make sure nothing crazy happens. So, so the card goes, match, match, you know, another match. Then, then the spoiler match happens. And spoiler is an old school wrestler, uh, he wears a mask and a singlet, um, and his move, his finisher is the claw, like the Carrie Von Erich or uh, claw, you know, claw. So he's wrestling this guy, and um, let's just call him Michael. And he's wrestling this guy, Michael, and Michael has the great idea that he's going to blade or he's going to bleed. Now, if you don't know, I hate to burst your bubble, but quite often the, the wound in order to bleed is self-inflicted. If you didn't know that, we cut ourselves with razor blades. But there is a specific safe, safe way of doing this so you don't like cut an artery or bleed out or do some really permanent damage. You see all the old timers on their forehead, like um, Abdullah the Butcher is a perfect example. And New Jack was too. They got all the scars right here. That's unnecessary. You don't have to scar up your forehead to bleed. I'm gonna make another video where I'm actually gonna make a blade and show, I'm not gonna do it because I'm not stupid. I'm sitting here at home, you know, so I'm, I'm going to make a blade, though, and show exactly how it's done. Um, and myself, I've done it you know, do a couple dozen times in my career, but this night was different. <laughs> so, spoil, now, the ring, uh, there's two types of canvases or ring mats that you can have. One is a actual canvas, um, big, thick, heavy canvas. And the other one 
is like almost like a plastic tarp. It's a shiny plastic that's stretched around and it's maybe have some like wrinkles in it here and there. And, you know, the sweat doesn't soak in. It kind of just like sits on top, you know? So we had one of those, the, the plastic ring mat covers for the ring. And so this guy, spoiler, ah, claw, you know, he's got him in the claw. And, and this guy goes the blade and nobody knew, first of all, that he was going to blade. Hey, indie wrestlers, if you're on a card and you're going to blade, you make sure that nobody else is also going to blade and you make sure that what you do is okay with the building, the promoter, the other guy. You, you make sure that everybody knows what's going to happen because you don't want that surprise of your blood everywhere. Oops, I didn't know we weren't supposed to. Blade. So... This guy didn't tell anybody. And this is what he did. I'm going to attempt to put a picture right here of the, bo the box cutter blade that I'm talking about. He used one of these to cut his forehead. The blade we use is about the size of a Tic Tac. It's a little bitty fucking thing. This guy used uh, this right here and um, cut himself from here to here all the way across down to the bone. I know it was down to the bone because that some bitch was open and you could damn near see his skeleton. Now, I don't know if you know this, but that kind of cut right there produces a lot of blood, like a horror scene amount of blood. And it was collecting in pools in the ring because instead of soaking into the canvas, it was on like a plastic tarp. Now think about if you're camping or you're outside and you have a plastic tarp and it rains, you, you know, it pulls up, but blood. There was people like almost throwing up in the crowd. Uh, about 35, maybe 40 people got up. There was a couple hundred people, maybe 250, 300 people in the crowd, but about 30 or 40 got up and grabbed their kids and literally walked out the door like covering their mouth like they like like they were they were out. So this guy ruined the show. Okay, so um fast forward about five minutes. That guy, Michael, is in the back locker room, sitting in a chair, bleeding all over himself. The boxing commissioner is over in the corner having a fucking stroke the promoter is like red face trying not to beat the crap out of this kid because it was just a young kind of a rookie kind of a kid right and this guy is sitting in the middle of a pro wrestling locker room on a nwa card so it's not just like backyard wrestlers and stuff that we're talking about like three, four, five well-known wrestlers on the card of, you know, like eight, nine wrestlers. So we're talking about like a nice, good show. And he ruined the whole damn thing. So the only thing that they could find to soak up the blood, they didn't have towels. They didn't have any sort of um, medical equipment at all, which I find to be very surprising. Uh, but the only thing that they had to soak up the blood I kid you not, I am not joking. Chaz Taylor was standing right next to me, um, was a diaper. So this guy is sitting in the middle of an NWA locker room 
with an incision, like a, with a slice, I don't know, incision, I guess, a, a slice in his head from end of eyebrow to end of eyebrow, bleeding. I'm talking like the diaper wasn't enough, but he's got a diaper on his head right here. And what he didn't know was that Brent Albright, AKA Gunner Scott, he was going to blade in the main event. And now, well, that was out of the question now. So they had to redo their entire finish of the match. And so Brent, to, uh, th saying that he was mad is an understatement. Now, Brent does not know who I am. If he ever watches this, because his name is going to be in the title, if he ever watches this, he won't remember me unless he has a really good memory because it was so long ago, but he will 1 million percent confirm this story to be true. He starts screaming at this guy, you dumb son of a bitch. You just ruined the main event. The whole damn show, people are leaving with their kids. I don't want to beat your fucking ass, but you're sitting there with a diaper on your head like an idiot. You fucking asshole. What the fuck? Don't you ever fucking come in a show I'm working on ever. He was going off. He was like, don't you ever come around me. Don't talk to me. Stay away from me. I don't want nothing to do with you. I will never work another show if I see you there ever again. Oh, he was going off. I was like, oh, I'm happy that's not me. Holy crap. So the guy, I think he might have worked a couple more matches, but then that was in the end of that for him. I mean, he never worked again after that. Um, I think he might have worked maybe like uh, another match, maybe like a year later in some they'll book anybody place, you know, the kind of place where they do book the backyarders. I mean, they'll, they'll book anybody there. Um, but yeah, that that was the most insane thing I think I've ever seen in a locker room because um, it was so real. Like, I, it was so gross and it was so real and people were freaking out. Kids were crying and stuff. I wanted to beat his ass and I was just like, you know, totally separate from the thing. I had nothing to do with that. Um, didn't affect my night at all, but... So, moral of the story, if you're going to do something crazy on the show, just make sure it's okay first. If you want to surprise some people, just, just check with the people in charge. Check with the promoter. Don't break the building in any way or impact the building. You know, I've done lots of shows in places where they don't want you to bleed. Like, let me give you a good example, a roller skating rink. That is a specific kind of floor. They got kids falling down on that floor at 24 hours a day, like 100% of the time that they're open. There are kids falling all over. They don't want some wrestler's blood stained. So, so you got to be really careful with that kind of thing. Um, so I have lots more stories. I really appreciate you watching till the end. If you would be so kind as to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I do videos on gaming. I do reaction content. I'm going to do stories. Uh, I'm Pretty soon I'm going to review some of my own matches. I'll put my little uh, streamer cam in the corner and watch the match in full and give my own commentary on it. Um, I might even try to get some where I like, have my opponent in the match on the video too with me. We'll see what I can pull off. Okay. For now, thank you very much for watching. Have a good night. Peace.